buckle up because it's time for a little bit more AMD RX Vega, which of course is the gaming edition of the line of Vega cards from AMD. Of course, we've heard an awful lot about the Radeon Pro Vega and of course the Frontier Edition. And these have been very much stressed by Raja Kadori as not for gamers, they're more for, well, content creators, video editing, 3D graphics, that sort of thing. But an interesting report has surfaced today, which I feel is worth discussing. My name is Amaza, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, we're going to talk about how, according to this latest report, the RX Vega, that again being the gaming edition, is faster than the GTX 1080 from NVIDIA. But it also seems that there's going to be two gaming editions of the RX Vega and these will be based on a fully enabled Vega 10 XT GPU and a cut down Vega 10 Pro version. Now, obviously we don't know exact details of either of these cards but let's look back again at the professional editions of Vega. The difference between the two on the Pro line is that one has 64 next generation compute units versus the 56 of the lower end models. It's a fairly safe assumption to say that it will be similar for the gaming cards. So based upon this assumption we could see 64 NCU for Vega XT and then 56 for the Vega Pro. I know it's a bit confusing to be talking about the Pro Edition and then Vega 10 Pro but Pro is just a code name for the cores only. It is different from the Radeon Pro Vega. So we've got the 10 XT and the 10 Pro which are allegedly part of the gaming sort of section of AMD's plans for Vega. Now obviously we're going to see lots of variations in design, we're going to see apparently a wider range of non-reference cooling designs both in terms of diversity and of the amount produced which is something we haven't really seen a lot of but the real crux of the thing really is that opening line that I started with that allegedly according to a report from HW Battle Vega will be faster than the GTX 1080 Sadly, they offered basically no information other than that, so obviously this raises several questions. The first of which is, of course, how much faster is it than the GTX 1080, and what about the GTX 1080 Ti? Obviously, at the moment, all we have to go on is, well, this rumour, the previous rumours that we've had, and of course the demos that we've seen. Demos have shown that Vega does perform, oh, sorry, outperform 1080s in Doom, but you have to consider that that is making use of the Vulkan API, which does give AMD a psych ad advantage, and it will be using old silicone. We have seen other demos, such as Star Wars, which unfortunately don't have a frame rate counter. I'm not saying we should completely disregard the Doom thing, I'm just saying that the Vulkan API plus AMD does give them a bit of an advantage in Doom, so... You can't just take the one sample of Vega outperforming to 1080 in Doom and say, yep, that's it, case closed, boys, let's move on. Vega clearly outperforms 1080 in all cases. That's obviously not a complete picture, but it is a snippet, a piece of the puzzle, as it were. Now, let's assume that this is true and that perhaps it even matches the performance of the GTX 1080 tie. This could actually be pretty massive, especially if AMD gets the price right. You know, price versus performance is very critical you know the 1080 tie is a very nice card in terms of what it can bring to the table in terms of raw power and performance but obviously it's not exactly cheap so if AMD can even answer that card with a graphics card that is perhaps cheaper to buy on the consumer level then that could be really interesting obviously it would be a lot less interesting if it only matches the 1080 but perhaps is outperformed by the GTX 1080 Ti unless of course there's a significant and I do mean significant difference in price so again we should take this all the pinch of salt because there's a lot of information that is missing but it's interesting indication nonetheless but as I already said by no means is it a complete picture but we also have something else for you regarding Ryzen and this is all thanks to a report from Canard PC and according to them there is a revision of Ryzen coming out, a new stepping, which will apparently fix some bugs in the silicone of the currently available Ryzen chips. Now, obviously, there has been a bunch of improvements from AMD, you know, when it comes to performance, reliability, and obviously compatibility with BIOSes, and obviously memory issues, and a GISA. But obviously, there's only so much you can do with software. A lot of the stuff that might be at fault here isn't really stuff to do with the CPU core, but instead the subcomponents, which basically means things like memory controllers and PCIe and all of that. Obviously, this is all part of the 
CPU package, but obviously isn't part of the core. It's kind of added on, kind of built around that very same core. Add-ons, I guess, is the simplest way to explain it. And according to Canard PC's report, the changes are apparently focused on the uncore components of Summit Ridge, and this again refers to things like the North Bridge, which, as already said, includes things like memory controllers and the PCIe Express. Could also point to, as I already said, further memory improvements beyond what we've seen brought to the table with Agisa 1.0.0.6. So basically, we're kind of getting the 14nm Summit Ridge Ryzen 1.1.2, I guess you could say, with improvements being made within the actual silicone itself. Which I guess is kind of a kick in the teeth for early adopters like myself and perhaps many people who are watching, but obviously does point to AMD very much recognising the issues that need to be ironed out within Ryzen that can't just be fixed with patches and so on, and BIOS updates and Basically, I guess you could argue, ensuring the longevity of Ryzen as, of course, we move into the future. So, basically, all in all, it's going to be interesting times from Camp AMD. I am fully expecting to see some hard you know, performance you know, data that we can actually say is 100% official and all that, and prices and release dates and blah de blah de blah from the RX Vega Gaming Editions soon, and, of course... Not only are we talking about the B2 stepping of Ryzen, but also, you know, looking ahead to things like Ryzen 3 and obviously what we have going on with Threadripper. So, with all that said, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.